Hi, you guys. Okay, so today I really wanted to do a full length video showing some of the more common mistakes that I see women over 40 making with their makeup. And I think it's really effective and beneficial to see kind of these mistakes side by side with things that I think are better practices for mature skin and the aging face. So on this side, we're going to do things, most common mistakes that I see women over 40 making. Um, there's a lot of different things that I think are maybe problematic or maybe not as beneficial, but I'm going to really stick with the things that I see more than not, like just the most common mistakes. And then on this side of the face, I'm going to do things that I think are going to be more favorable, things that are going to be more attractive in the end. Um, and then you're going to be able to see them side by side and see, gosh, wow, these are things that I do. And maybe if I tried this other way, um, it might serve me better in the long run. Um, I also ask you to try these things, these new techniques out and spend a couple days with them, ideally about two weeks. I think sometimes when we change something on our face, our eyes just go and zero in on that new thing. And it's really hard for us to see the whole picture. I call this the Mona Lisa effect. You know, when you're going and you're looking at Mona Lisa, you can stand in different places and it looks like she's always following you with her eyes. The same thing happens with our face when we change something. No matter what we're doing, our eyes are gonna zoom in on that one change that we've made. And it's not until about two weeks that I think our eyes zoom out and we're able to see the whole thing. Um, we're, we're able to take in the whole picture. Okay. So let's just start with foundation. I think, I think there are a lot of ways that our makeup can age us, but I would say that the most common thing that I see women over 40 doing is just slapping over, slapping on an all over color and calling it a day. Um, and more often than not, it's a little bit full coverage and it's a little, it's slightly too light for our skin. So I'm going to use this NARS foundation. This is a soft matte um, foundation. This is pretty full coverage. It's more mattifying. It's what women over 40 are used to. We're used to um, more of a matte finish, which is just something that we did in our youth. And it's something that we carry in and often don't change about our foundation. Also, a lot of women over 40 do not get a new color match as they age. And the fact of the matter is, is we have a lot of um, discrepancies in our skin as we get older. So getting a new color match is really important, I would say, about every decade just to see, okay, what are we combating here? And instead of trying to cover up those things with full coverage, we start using color science or color theory to do more covering. So this full coverage foundation, I would say NARS probably is one of the best um, that I've seen if you need a full coverage foundation. But I have this in my kit for very specific purposes on set. This is not something that I would use for something for everyday, um, everyday life, okay? This is a very, very... Um, limited purpose that I would use a full coverage foundation. So the other thing that I see women doing is not taking it onto their neck. So just like them, I'm going to stop at my jawline and I'm going to put it on. Um, there, I would say that like, if someone were to put this on and see this, they would think, gosh, this matches me. Um, but the reality is this is a little too light for my skin. And what you're going to see when you look up close is you're going to see a lot of texture that you don't even see on the side that doesn't have makeup. Okay. So you need to remember something. If you see something on someone else and it looks like that on everyone else, but you don't think it looks like that on you, chances are it does look like that on you, but you're unable to see it on yourself. And vice versa, if it looks beautiful on everyone else, but you don't think it looks beautiful on you, chances are it does look beautiful on you. You're just unable to see yourself with real, clear, objective eyes, okay? Um, so just just always remember that. Go, you know what? I, I probably am not the best judge. Either I see too many flaws or I'm only looking at one thing and I'm not able to see the whole picture. With full coverage, a lot of times women think, 
oh my gosh, I don't see my spots, my veins, my uh, whatever anymore. And that's all they're looking at, but, it, but they're not actually seeing how the makeup is sitting on the skin. Dirty Coke, always, always. Okay, instead, I think if we did our makeup with a 3D foundation in one layer, we're going to serve our skin better, okay? So doing something that maintains the high points and low points, that's in more of a cream, um, you know, consistency that mimics skin better and that has more of a dewy finish, that's going to be so much better than having something that dries down into a flat finish and that um, doesn't ultimately look like skin. So I would say forego coverage for luminosity um, because it's less distracting than you think. The things that are distracting to you aren't as distracting to the person looking at you, but unnatural finish is very distracting. So I'm gonna go in with now just basically a cream foundation. I'm doing this all in one layer so that I um, don't have too much product on my skin. That's the other thing that we really want to avoid as we get older. So I'm just using this brush right here, which is going to give me, I need to do it onto my neck. This brush is going to give me a light to medium coverage. And as you can see, I'm maintaining the, the dimension in my face, which is removed from over here because the natural face has dimension. And I'm just kind of blending everything together, but not, not, I'm not flattening my face. Like a natural face has high points and low points, okay? So that's, that's the first thing. Um, the second thing, that I see or something that I see women do a lot that is kind of days of old and something that you can get away with when you're in your 20s and maybe even your early 30s is a super uber light concealer under your eyes. Um, so I'm going to use Shape Tape because this is, I think, the biggest culprit and people just still putting on way too much product underneath your eyes, okay? So I'll use my finger. This is definitely even <laughs> too much product, even for this little example, okay? So a lot of women, me included, loved a super bright under eye. And we thought that it was doing us favors because it was completely canceling out and, um, removing all of the darkness under our eyes and giving us this nice bright highlight, okay? So this is something that we used to do, but it, it is not going to help us as we get older, okay? Too light of a product is going to show all of the texture under our eyes. So if you happen to have, you know, lines and creases there, this is going to magnify it, is not going to conceal it, okay? but we can still get a brightening effect under our eyes. We just wanna place it only where the darkness is and then blend it out. So I always say to my, um, I just realized I didn't blend this in. So I always say to my um, customers and my clients, if it blends, it extends. You don't need to like swipe all the way under everywhere because a little bit will blend out. So if it blends, it extends. So you just want to blend it out into that pie-shaped area, okay? And this is also a cream formula, so it's not going to dry down. It's gonna stay mobile like your skin. That's what makes it so skin-like, whereas this over here is going to dry down. Okay, so on this side, you can see I have three dimension. I still have a brightness under my eyes, but it isn't so drastic or dramatic. Um, but you're getting this nice three-dimensional face. Everything still has coverage. It's not completely opaque, but it still looks like skin. And if I was wearing a low-cut shirt, this kind of all blends into my, my skin on my um, 
decollete in my chest. Or if, you know, summer's coming, my arms are showing, it doesn't look like this belongs to a mannequin and then I have a human body, okay? This is why celebrities do um, face paint or body makeup when they're on the red carpet so that everything is cohesive because this looks so not like the rest of the skin on their body, okay? Another thing is using powder all over your face. We are so accustomed to using a powder everywhere and setting that. And all this is going to do is crease and dry out the skin further. Most of us, as we age, we get drier skin. And so this is not going to help us anyway. If you want to set your makeup, which I still set my makeup and I do like to blur some areas using that wet beauty blender and just lightly placing in the T-zone is really all you need because it's only going to migrate where you emote, okay? Where the face is mobile. Other places, they're really not going to, it's really not gonna be pushed anywhere like it will around your eyes, around your mouth, in between your, your eyebrows, okay? So that's, that's that. Another thing that I see women do um, and blush is one of those tricky things I see people do a lot, um, especially those of us over 40, is putting it just on the apples of our cheek, okay? Putting the blush there. Okay, what the problem with this is, is that this area already gets heavy and we don't want to draw attention to that. So instead, using a lip and cheek formula on your cheeks that's going to give more of that dewiness, that radiance, and keeping one to two finger widths away from your nostril, still coming on the apples of the cheek, but then taking it upward into an upward trajectory. That way it doesn't stop abruptly when you turn your head, okay, because you're multifaceted. And it also isn't going to add or aid into a heaviness over by your laugh lines or your nasal labial folds, okay? So that way you get a nice youthful flush on your face. It's not so low, okay? And it's not creating a heaviness right here. Also, this is a powder and I don't think it's as realistic as using a really pretty cream blush that's going to, again, mimic skin and give you that lit from within glow. This is just going to give you so much more of a natural finish. Okay, moving on to eyebrows. Now, there's a lot of mistakes that I see women make with eyebrows, but I would say the biggest culprit is saying, I don't really need to do anything to my brow. So they just leave their brows as is, and they have a full face of makeup. This ends up being a little bit more um, distracting than even having too much product in your brows because everything is touched and the brows have been left alone. And oftentimes, women over 40 suffer from the um, too skinny brow, right? And so after that, they're growing those brows in and they're usually not the correct shape. They're not hitting the correct plumb lines. So I would say the best thing that you can do is add in a little bit of product into your brows, making sure that you are hitting all of the right points when it comes to your eyebrows. Um, eyebrows are very architectural. They are creating the stage for your entire face, really. Um, think of it as the frame on the picture, okay? So you wanna make sure that the brows hit right here, okay? Right here and right here. So if yours don't, all you need to do is add in a little bit of product. And I have a full brow you know, tutorial how you can create the correct brow shape. But for the purpose of this video, um, you know, just adding in a little even getting help from a stencil, something like that, just so that you have the correct shape 
to your brows, okay? Whereas over here is just nothing, which I have pretty good brows, right? Okay, so this is, this is this. Now let's get on to eyes. And I think eyes are where we can age ourselves the most. Okay, one of the biggest things that I see women do with their eye makeup is not put their eyeshadow high enough on their eyes. Okay, so I'm just gonna take just a light color and I'm gonna do the same color on both eyes, but I'm gonna show you the difference. Now, the first time I did this video, I had hooded eyes. I've since had a bluff. So I think that it was more obvious, obviously with, with hooded eyes to how it can um, accentuate that. But a lot of times women have hooded eyes and this is where the skin folds and kind of touches that lash line. You lose a lot of your mobile lid, okay? But what women think is, I have this hooded eye and I don't wanna draw attention to it, so I'm not gonna put eyeshadow there. Well, if you've been around here, you know I talk about the purpose of highlight and contour, whether it's for your face or your eyes or your body, when you wear things that have light, it's gonna come forward, and when it's dark, it's gonna recede, okay? So if you already have this fat pad, and this goes for a fat pad underneath the eye too, the lighter it is, the more it's gonna come forward. So you can see, I don't even have a hooded eye anymore, but it actually looks kind of hooded just by the way that I have done my eye makeup. So using the same color and making sure that I go all the way to the lash line, but that I actually come up onto the brow bone so that when I'm looking straight ahead, you can see the shadow. What I've done is I've created more surface area and I've actually disguised that hooding. Now I look like I have deeper set eyes, actually larger eyes, and I also think it's beneficial to come all the way in like this, like you're connecting. If I had a nose contour, it would be connecting the nose contour, okay? But that's that's a little bit advanced. Most importantly, it's come up all the way on that brow bone. That's what I would say is one of the biggest things that I see women over 40, um, in general, women in general, doing um, when they are self-conscious about the hooding of their eyes, but you just wanna make sure that you come up high enough on that eye because remember, dark recedes, light comes forward and you wanna create a pretty depth. Now, if you already have a deep set eye, this is not something that's necessary, but I would say, um, you know, still you want to evaluate. Hey, Charlie, hush. Is this still something you wanna evaluate by stepping away from the mirror, not getting too close to it? and making sure that you have the right amount of color in the right places, okay? All right, so that is eyeshadow. Now, grab your pearls. This might be a hard pill to swallow for a lot of ladies, but liner. We loved our liner in the 90s. We still love our liner, but here's one thing that you want to really, really try to let go of. And I think that this is probably the hardest ask of most women. And it is using the same color and intensity on the top of your lid on the bottom, okay? Your eyes have two lids. You have an, a, a top mobile lid and then you have a bottom lid, okay? This top lid should have the most of the intensity and then everything else should be a softer shadow underneath. So if you want to line, I'm not saying that you can't line your bottom line, but if you want to line your eyes, use something softer and lighter on the bottom than you do on the top. Marilyn Monroe's makeup artist always said he was creating bedroom eyes and he would do a softer shadow on the bottom and so that it looked like her lashes were so long and lush that it was casting a shadow down there, okay? But we don't want to rim the eyes so completely that we're not giving really the person looking at us anywhere to look, anywhere to focus, all right? So the top liner or the top eye can probably take the most intensity. So most, of, most women love their black liner. That's totally fine. But also one of the things is, 
that liner does. Okay, here's what liner does. Liner creates shape, but it also creates a fuller lash line. So we're already doing that with the liner. That's not really um, something that we're gonna talk about today, but we're gonna talk about creating shape with the eyeliner. What I see mostly women do is just following their lash line and there's no real tapering to the, the liner. They're not really creating a new shape. They're just following their natural eye. Now, even if you did a wing at the side, that's fine. We're still, this is still the same thing that we're doing. Um, so I'm gonna come in with this and smooth it out because that was a, I have a liquid too, but I'm just showing how using the same product doesn't really do you any favors, okay? So a lot of women line their eye with their liner and they follow their natural eye. The problem with this is we really are, now my eye looks downturned, even compared to the one that doesn't have liner. Because even though my eye shape isn't downturned, there is a natural tapering of the eye that's gonna go down, a normal eye, right? It's, a, it's an almond shape, okay? Even if you have really round eyes, the sides go down. And when you're following that down, people follow lines with their eyes. So what this is doing is it's creating a downturn effect that's really not that attractive. It's really not doing my eyes any favors. And then if I were to come and just do the waterline, which is another um, thing that I think most women do, they think, oh gosh, this makes my green eyes pop or this makes my eyes pop. Yes and no. <laughs> Okay, um, it is it is creating drama, but it's not necessarily attractive. Okay, there's a difference. We can call attention to something on both sides of the spectrum, right? So this is definitely adding drama to the eye. It's definitely lining it, but we haven't told the person that's looking at us, hey, I want you to look here. It's kind of all the same all the way around. Now, Trying something softer, moving to a softer color. This is a very dark brown, okay? And what I'm gonna do is, instead of following the trajectory of my eye, I'm going to go to the crest of my eye, which is the tallest point. First, number one that we do, we follow the lash line, right? And then we come straight out. Just like this. Okay. Now what I've done is I have created a nice upturn. I didn't take this up. It's actually going, the trajectory is going straight out. But instead of following that, that eye down, I've created now a taper and it is coming up and it is giving me a much more attractive um, shape to my eye. And I can still come in here. If you want that line to come all the way across, you can still connect, okay? And I like to use, this is my etch brush, and I like to use this to smooth out that line. And you can still do this with black, but just being a little bit more um, conservative with it, okay? And then if I wanted to do a lower eyeliner, I'm using something a little bit softer. This is Smoky Quartz, okay? So I'm going to go into the lash line, but I'm also going to take it to the outer lashes and just smudge it in. So now this is a little bit softer than the liner that I have on top. I'm still giving my eyes a nice pop but you can see when you do it underneath, now we're utilizing the lower lid. So now I have so much more surface area to work with, okay? So that's really, that's really like my tip for eyes. You can see how this actually looks so much smaller because everything is squeezed into just my eyeball 
This is actually utilizing the entire eye space. This is your whole eye area. You want to use both of those lids, okay? And then we can go in and we can add in mascara. I would say that um, a problem that I see with mascara is just too much. It's just too much product and it's it stops being... It stops doing what it's supposed to do and becomes a distraction. So because I feel like that takes a lot of work to add in all the layers, I'm going to forego the demonstration and just leave it to your imaginations, what that would look like if I had several more, more coats on, okay? I think that that's just a little bit of a distraction. And then when it comes to lips, I think just, you know, finding a color that is not flattering to your skin um, is really probably one of the most problematic things. And that just comes from trial and error. Um, you know, doing something too bright. You know, is something that I see women do all the time just something that isn't flattering to their skin tone. And then also, I really do think that a lip liner can be very, very helpful in creating shape and not necessarily overlining, but just defining. And there's a difference. Oh, this needs to be sharpened. Let's see if I have one. It's already ready to go. Okay, and not coming outside the lines right here. I would say the overlining is something that I see more often in younger gals that is problematic. Um, and I'm not really answering questions today, but if you have questions uh, that you think I can help you with, to get the best, most attractive um, look out of your makeup, definitely message me, I'm happy to help you. Um, but here is what it looks like when you use an all over flat, full coverage concealer, I'm sorry, full coverage foundation, um, a really bright, really opaque concealer. Your blush is too low um, and it doesn't come back. Um, and then using eyeshadows that don't come up high enough, rimming the eye with liner all the way around and then not putting on um, anything in the brows. And then I didn't do bronzer over here, but this is what it looks like when you use a medium that is more favorable for maturing skin. You do your makeup in one layer as opposed to layering upon layers. You maintain the three-dimensional nature of your face. It doesn't mean that you have to like do crazy contour, but we're not removing all of the nuances of the human face, which has high points and low points. We're staying true to that. Um, we have a foundation that looks like skin, mimics skin, contour, a blush that goes on the apples of your cheek and the trajectory up so that no matter where I turn, you can see a blush. And then taking that eyeshadow all the way up onto the brow bone, filling in the brows to make sure that it's meeting all the points that it needs to. And then utilizing eyeliner to not only fill in gaps, but to create a beautiful shape to your eyes. And then also utilizing that lower lid space like it should, because you can see how this is closed off and this is so much more open. The other thing over here is we set the entire face with powder, whereas here we only set the powder in the mobile areas and we used a very fine, finely milled, um, very thin application, okay? The Smoky Quartz is made by Victoria Beckham was the eyeliner over here, and this is a milk um, long wear eyeliner, which is typically a really great liner. I just didn't do it in a very pretty fashion. Um, but this just shows you how little things that you do that you may be used to might not be doing you any favors. So if you're looking to update your routine, if you find yourself kind of stuck in things that you did in the past, but you're not feeling the same about your makeup and you just want some changes, you just want to feel better, look better, I'm here to help you. And I know that it's really hard to let go of those things that we're just so used to. We're so accustomed to seeing ourselves in. 
but I promise if you take it, you know, one step at a time and you make these little changes overall, you're going to be doing yourself so much more favors. Um, and you're going to feel so beautiful in the end. And you're going to be really glad that you kind of let go of some of those things that you were doing in the past and moved forward with your makeup and that application. Okay. So, um, both things really are, um, helpful as we get past 40. Okay. You're so sweet, you guys. Thank you so much for showing up. I'll definitely save this video if you want to, um, you know, go back and look at some things. Like I said, I'm available if you have any questions. If you want to get matched in um, the cream foundation and learn how to use it, I'm here. I will not only match you, but I'll walk you, walk with you every step of the way. Um, and I will talk with you guys soon.